Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Useless Receipt. This happened a couple of years ago at Canadian Tire, what one of their Mastercraft tools did often go on sale for huge discounts. We were helping my in-laws clear out old belongings when they were moving and I found an impact wrench that looked unused with an old receipt attached. Father-in-law said that there was always a problem with it, so he never used it and forgot to return it. I decided to try to return it to Canadian Tire, since they have long warranties on their products. The rep looked at the receipt for $60, on sale from $200, and said, you can't return this item with this receipt. Too much time has passed and the receipt is useless. I tried explaining there were issues with it, but she didn't believe me. I googled the issues right there, and it came up as a recall item for the exact reason I stated. I showed it to her, and she begrudgingly agreed that I could return it as a recall. She asked for the receipt back so she could refund me, and I said, no, too much time has passed and the receipt is useless. She glared at me and processed a cash refund for over $225, including taxes. The next story is called Nothing I Can Offer. I'm a professional chef and I have been for a few years. In Australia, apprentice chefs are trained in a sort of college where we learn about 150 recipes. Many of their recipes are provided to the students in bulky, finicky booklets that you wouldn't want to take anywhere with you. So I started writing some of the receipts in a separate notebook, along with some other recipes I'd learned from co-workers or family members, and created a sort of pseudo cookbook. I would often bring this book into the kitchen, so I would remember ingredient quantities and cooking times. And eventually I would leave the book in the kitchen pretty much around the clock. What I soon found out was that some of the other chefs in the kitchen were using my cookbook to check official recipes for the restaurant we worked for. Typically, the head chef would have to tell them, and this got annoying for everyone. This restaurant was a part of a popular sports club in the local area, so consistency was extremely important to management. Having a written record of the new recipes or changes to long-time recipes was very important. As it turned out, Management had stopped making changes to the official club recipe book a few months before I even started. So my book became the de facto official recipe book. For a while, this was no issue to me. I kept adding new recipes to it throughout the next few years. However, after my third year working there, I finished my studies and became fully qualified as a chef. So I suddenly became more expensive to keep on as a staff member. And as such, management started looking for any reason to replace me with a new apprentice. Eventually, they found someone to replace me and gave a half-baked reason for firing me and told me to take all my things and leave as I could no longer offer what they were looking for. So I took everything I owned and left, including the notebook with all the club's recipes. For a few days, not a whole lot happened. But slowly, the club's reviews started complaining about bland food, dry cakes, inconsistent classic recipes, and every other food-related thing you could think of. At one point, there were 50 negative reviews in a single day, which for our town was a massive amount. It felt pretty good, since I felt they deserved it, for firing me on short notice. However, I was quickly offered a new job by a smaller restaurant whose owner knew me from the sports club kitchen. After about a week, I received multiple calls. And after answering one, I heard one of the higher managers at the sports club asking if I could return the book as the kitchen needed it back. I obviously laughed and said firmly that it was my book full of my receipts, so it wasn't going anywhere near them. And I reminded them that they had told me I could no longer offer what they were looking for. The manager clearly began to panic, as he offered to give me my job back, and just let bygones be bygones. I already had a new job, so I completely brushed off this offer and ignored him. I hung up pretty soon after that. I started putting the receipts from my book on the new restaurant's menu, 
and it was beginning to attract a few regular customers of the sports club. So I quickly found myself with more and more responsibility and command within the kitchen, to the point that about a third of the menu was from my book. The slow trickle of sports club's regulars picked up speed after about three months and led to several high-level managers from the club deciding to visit the restaurant I'd had built and virtually demanded I give them my cookbook, claiming it would be much more beneficial for the community if they had it. I had chef laughed in their faces and told them to screw off. It's been about two years and my head chef and I have a very positive relationship and the customer base we have at the restaurant is better than ever. We didn't take every customer from the big club, but it was enough to damage their profits and to scare a few investors away. It also led to a decent bit of damage to one of the higher manager's reputation. The recipe issues and negative reviews led to the majority of the kitchen quitting. According to one of my old colleagues, they cited the lack of support and organization from upper management as the final reasons everyone was quitting. This led to an even larger dip in the quality of the restaurant food. As for me, I get paid significantly more at this restaurant than I was at the sports club. The last story is called Want the Shirts Back. Back in February 2014, on a Sunday, I was driving home from going clothes shopping. For my new job I was starting in a week, when my car caught on fire. I had just bought a good amount of clothes and my laundry was in my car from the laundromat, including my work shirt and white lab coat. I had already given my notice to my boss that I was leaving and the next day I called in to tell her what had happened and that I would not be in due to smoke inhalation issues and needing to buy a new car. This was supposed to be my last day. She decided to tell me that I needed to return my free work shirts and both lab coats or I would have to cost garnish for my last check. I told her that they were a pile of ash at the salvage yard. She tells me I have to bring them in. Okay, will do. Tuesday I walked in with a picture of my laundry basket melted in my car and a ziplock filled with ashes and mud. I recorded myself giving them to her and telling her again what happened. I got a side eye and a what the heck, but I just walked out with a smirk. I've been at the new job for 10 years now, best move I ever made. Also my wages never were garnished. I don't think they legally could, but who knows. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.